Okay, well, let's move on. Uh, another uh, big topic uh, increasingly and discussed at this recent summit with, with uh, several presentations is uh, minimal residual disease. Uh, how should we measure it? And is it uh, clinically important right now? So just a few data elements here uh, for people to see. I think the proof of principle, for me, I uh, particularly thought uh, the, the, the manuscript from the Mayo Clinic uh, from Kapoor that was published in the JCO at the end of uh, 2013 was quite helpful mm -hmm. to show the proof, proof of principle that stringent CR uh, showed a significant benefit at two years. And I was also impressed with the notion of if a stringent CR is sustained for a minimum of six months, this is particularly helpful in PFS and overall survival. And so we're starting to move toward this idea if you have a low level of disease and if it's sustained for a certain length of time, six months, one year, maybe two years, that this will really predict for a better longer term outcome. And so the question is how much added value do we get by looking even lower? And so these are data looking using the flow method uh, in the bone marrow using the eight color flow with a sensitivity at the 10 to the minus five level, you, the Spanish data presented by uh, Maria V. And to show that we're starting to see straight lines where uh, we have really long remissions if in addition you have a, a, a flow uh, negative CR. And so we have a proof of principle that maybe this is a very valuable clinical test to identify this kind of a patient and could become a goal of, of, of our therapy, perhaps. There are obviously uh, differences uh, and questions about is the flow test sufficient now with a, with a, a higher level of sensitivity? Do we need to continue to look and, and be very, very careful about uh, the new generation sequencing? And this just shows the comparison where there is a good comparability. However, clearly down here you have these discrepant results. At this boundary level of around 10 to the minus 5, there are definitely patients who are positive with the next generation sequencing and negative with the flow. Now, it seems that these will probably be picked up with the more sensitive flow, but, but clearly uh, this needs to be looked at in an ongoing fashion to compare next generation sequencing uh, with the flow. Um, this is uh, from uh, o Ola's data, a, a very, very nice uh, study, actually a very uh, um, disappointing study really to show what's going on in, in the US of A, uh, looking at minimal residual disease, uh, a study of 26 centers showing that uh, the number of cells from the bone marrow that was evaluated uh, ranged from maybe 100,000 cells up to 3 million cells. And that this makes a huge difference. When you only look at a smaller number of cells, you might uh, or might not find any abnormal cells. Whereas if you just look at more cells, you will obviously find more normal and abnormal uh, plasma cells. And so uh, this, this report published in Blood uh, is pleading for standardization to, to, to really have a, a uniform approach uh, to have a correct answer. There is a new test that has been developed by the Spanish team uh, that has some very positive aspects to it using a computer output put where it can have an objective endpoint and does have sensitivity at this lower level and can, can be uh, cheaply applied. And so uh, we are going to be looking at this more closely and comparing it with the molecular methodology. There is the idea that if, if we do use this, it would then come into the new response criteria where we would create a new MRD zero or negative category that would incorporate MRD assessment. And this is very important as we start to look at the different categories of disease. And we heard in, in considerable detail at this summit meeting that we need to look at myeloma more closely where we have these new definitions where we have the crab myeloma, and we can get comments here from uh, Dr. McHale about the pre-crab myeloma, <laughs> uh, where we are identifying very clearly patients who are not symptomatic, and then redefining uh, high-risk smoldering, which would include this small number of the ultra-high risk. Uh, and so these definitions are, are quite important as we start to evaluate MRD and the achievement of MRD in these different uh, three uh, populations of, uh, of patients. 
And so uh, the, the flow technique is rolling out. It was, uh, it was shown in Salamanca, and, and this can become available as, as a method, uh, which is very important. Uh, but the, the big questions for you guys, uh, is MRD testing ready for prime time? Uh, and how do you suggest that we should use it? Uh, I, I would say just from the outset that certainly we're proposing that this would be in the clinical trial setting at this moment. Uh, I don't, uh, well, you can comment, but I don't think that we're recommending that this is uh, a prime time for the local oncologist as yet. Uh, would you like to comment first, Ola, on this? Okay, so <laughs> I do think that MOD testing is ready for prime time in clinical trials. I think we have the data. Uh, we know that among patients who reach a complete response, there is a subset of patients that are MOD negative, and those patients have a longer both progression-free and overall survival. And that information is published in, from multiple studies. So I think the data is there. Uh, these are based on flow cytometry-based uh, assays. So there are flow cytometry machines around the world. So what needs to happen is that we need to come up with standardized rules what MOD negativity is. And as you showed on the slide from the study we published last uh, year in blood, uh, the variance is more than 100-fold. So uh, the number of cells varies between 1 and 100 in the same patient, depending on what lab is doing the test. And that's not acceptable. Right. So 1 has to be 1 everywhere, and 100 has to be 100 everywhere. That needs to be done. And it's not very difficult. We have to just sit down and agree. Right. So if we can do that very soon, MRD can start tomorrow. Right, right. But, but to achieve this, uh, you know, as, as, as you know, we, we had this uh, meeting in Salamanca where we had uh, education uh, for participants from several countries, actually. Uh, but now, uh, to help on the, on the U.S. side, we will have a meeting uh, in, in New York. Yeah, we are hosting this meeting together with IMF I in July. Uh, and we have more than 70 people, I think, right now interested in coming. So I think... If, uh, if we can do this the right way, which we are planning on doing together now, I think we can launch it in America and Europe and in 2014, I think MRD will be implemented. That's what I think. Right, right. So, so Antonio, what do, you, what do you think about this MRD? Uh, I, I, I certainly agree with him that uh, we are moving uh, from uh, a serological definition uh, of CR to a more precise and uh, definition of CR. My only comment would be that I would probably prefer we should start defining what we have because we should start using the term of serological CR, the flow CR, mm -hmm. the molecular CR, and the imaging yes. because this might be different. So right. we should probably incorporate uh, not only right. one, because one, right. one definition might cover everything and is slightly confusing. Right. The serological CR is different from the flow right. and, and, and it's different from the imaging. So right. this right. should be defined in a different way. Right, That's so if, only if I just go back to the slide, I mean, what, what you're talking about is something that we, we have compacted together here, but it may be that we need to, as we do this, identify uh, each component and say that we have uh, flow or molecular negative, imaging uh, positive or negative, and then the other test that we didn't really touch on yet, uh, the heavy light, which is a precise way to look uh, more sensitively uh, beyond immunofixation, to, to have a serologic with heavy light, imaging, molecular flow. But you have different background. I think yes. this will, be, will help very much, you know, having, you know, someone might have a study on MRI and that is the imaging study. So you have different... Uh, background uh, right right what do you think about this yeah, no I, I agree i think i th i mean i hear what ola is saying I, i'm not sure it's quite ready for prime time we're getting close but i i, I we absolutely have to define better what, which imaging or which technique we're going to use for mrd or as you've said for each category how we can define complete remission i mean i'm, I'm glad we're, we're in a situation where we can look for this tiny little bit of dust in the corner right. that, that might grow the only other last comment i would make about it is um, again, going back to that, that, my patient, you know, from four years, they're, they're, perplexingly, there are still some patients who remain MRD positive or even have a little bit of uh, disease left that seem to sit indolent. It's almost like they've returned to their MGUS state. 
right. and stay yeah. there for a long time. I'll be at a small group. We just want to be careful that we don't, again, apply it to every patient, that everyone must get to uh, MRD negativity. Uh, but I really applaud Ola's efforts and others to help us see this because the old adage, if you don't take a temperature, the patient won't have a fever. Right. <laughs> you know, we're, if we're not looking for it, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna be missing the fact that there are people that have disease. Right, right. And, and I can't help but comment on the pre-crab. Can you bring up that oh, slide yes, again? Yes, so yes. I just, let's, because let's this has just, been a, a, a legacy at this debate. You know, we started yes. with crab, and then I proposed lobster, which didn't quite fit. <laughs> and then we had crab legs. Right. But let me suggest so, that... So that we're talking, just for those of you who maybe didn't hear the last discussion, we're talking about this uh, pre-crab mm -hmm. group here. Right. So, so the, I think I applaud, what, I think, what is happening here at the IMWG, which is to say, instead of making more categories of um, smoldering disease, where we say, well, people with smoldering myeloma should be treated with this sort of minimal treatment, and then people with true myeloma get the real treatment. I think what we're learning now is we're going to sort of tuck in to true myeloma, some of those patients yes. who right now don't these, fit myeloma these, criteria, ultra, ultra high but are still, exactly, what are called the ultra high risk. And um, you know, the analogy I give is if I see someone walking towards a cliff and they're just about to fall off the cliff, I don't have to wait for them to be falling to know that they're falling. Um, and so we, these three criteria are being added to CRAB, the 60% um, plasma cells, the light chain assay where the involved over uninvolved is 100, uh, and the MRI uh, uh, findings that might indicate more that there's more lesion. disease. Right. And so my suggestion was with the S for 60, with the LI for light, and the M for MRI, now instead of calling it crab, we have slim crab. <laughs> We'll eventually, see. eventually, I'll have an I and a Y, and yes. we'll have it slimy crab. But for yes. now, it's just yeah. slim crab. For, so, for some crab. reason, maybe, maybe not quite so catchy. I think we need to take this under advisement. Yes. For now. Okay. <laughs> it's just preliminary <laughs> thought. What, we change it every every <laughs> debate. Right? Well, so, what do you think? You're getting dangerously close to Scrabble. <laughs> Scrabble. Yeah, yeah, Scrabble. That Scrabble. That what it's going to be. <laughs> right. But, uh, right. Yeah, MRD. My my. Yes. Um, yeah. What's your take brief on this? on MRD. It's we absolutely need it, and, and I totally agree with all that. That you know, it's he he didn't say do it for everybody. He said it's ready for prime time in clinical trials, trials. and we need the information because it's going to guide us in the future. We're gonna we're not going to stop treating when people reach CR. Right. We're going to continue and we're going to need to monitor what's going on. And it's going to be a, a hugely important part of how we treat. But we also need the imaging. Yes. I think what Antonio said about yes, imaging yeah. is really important because myeloma is not just a diffuse marrow yeah, yeah, exactly. Disease. We, we yeah. really need this piece. And we have PET CT here, but I think that we need to compare all the imaging techniques to have an imaging endpoint in addition to the serologic and the yeah. flow and the molecular. Yeah, so we had used this same therapy uh, with this combination in patients with high-risk smoldering myeloma. We are yes. just analyzing the results. We hope to publish it very soon. Looking in that series, it seems that the vast majority of patients, they reach a complete remission. Machine. So if we are at that point, we no longer need to check. Right. And that means that we must have more sensitive technology. So MRD has to come very, very soon because we basically... Right. We don't have any instruments using the conventional tools. They all are probably in complete response, which right, is, of course, right. fantastic. But we need to be able to quantify the depth At of that, that response level. beyond that. So, so, so what do you, what do you uh, feel about this time frame? I, I was actually impressed with uh, the value of adding a time component where if you sustain uh, the MRD, similar to the stringent CR, for six months or a certain time frame, this is even more important. You, you, should we? Would completely agree because you know you have to incorporate not only the amount of cytoreduction but, but also the biology of the, the disease. disease. Because then the biology of the disease is at least six months, at least. At least exactly. It's tragic that we have some patients who get into that even MRD negativity, but then the disease comes right back up. Right. So, so, so quantifying it. Right, the duration before. should be incorporated. Right. So this is actually part of, the, of this uh, Black Swan Research Initiative. Is where in a standardized way, we try to identify what is this critical time point. Absolutely. I think that's going to be critical, whether we're going to be calling it 
MRD6 or MRD12 D- or CR6 or exactly. CR12. Exactly. This is an opportunity m- for new uh, terminology. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I will be there. Get with trained for the next one. All the cheesy algorithms you want, I'm ready. I'm ready. All right.